So this is a, in the beginning it was like over hour and a half talk, so I squeezed down, squeezed down, several presentations. So I'm gonna try to do it in, in a little bit less than an hour, but I wanna try to cover as much code sample as I can. Um, I'm gonna try to spend 25 minutes in a slide concept, and with some code in the slides too, but then I'm gonna jump in a, in a code. Uh, I'm gonna play with that, I should have a, some cool stuff in the hand that I always get excited if I run it, run it, always pretty cool stuff. So, um, just a feeling, how many are you familiar with F Sharp? All right, cool, very cool, all right. And uh, what about Akka slash Akka.net? All right. All right, all right. And I know Scala flavor. Right? Yeah, there are, so the Scala flavors be more mature. There are, um, the Akadonets try to, you know, the catching kind of game, but there are some stuff the Akadonet has that the Scala or the JVM doesn't and vice versa. Actually, uh, especially with the F-sharp API that I will show in the end, there's definitely something that when I show to the Aka JVM people, what you can do? They really say, "Whoa, that's something." So that's actually what why I'm here, right? So I'm gonna just get started. So this is the agenda. We're gonna go through a little bit what's going on out there, you know, uh, in the world. Uh, briefly about the Racto Manifesto. We discuss what it is and uh, why should you care about the actor model. You're familiar with F Sharp, so I will discuss briefly about the F Sharp agent or mailbox processor. Just really two minutes to introduce um, the difference between agent and actor, because I found out that people usually uh, in conversations use both terms meaning the same thing, but there are some differences. And then I'm gonna check what is the ACA.net and the awesome F Sharp API and a lot of code sample. All the slides and code material are already on GitHub. I'll provide the link in the hand so we're able to download and play with. So, briefly about me, I'm originally from Italy, but I relocate and I live in Washington DC uh, for 10 years now. Uh, almost 18 years professional programming and I organize the DC F Sharp user group. I'm currently working for Microsoft and of course, you know, we are all passionate about technology. That's why we're here Saturday morning. So, I will cover a lot of material. My primary, there are three objectives I want to take away. That one is that uh, today is never before application must be with concurrency in mind, right? And especially, uh, uh, possibly from the beginning. And the actor, I'm a biased, but I think it's the best, but it's a great programming, a concurrent programming model, really, uh, um, to solve the problem of scaling out and scaling up. And uh, all things are more important, really, and the reason because all this presentation, the ACA.net and F-sharp, really, is a very powerful combination of these two technology. So, in the last 10 years, really, we saw a significant change in the world of computing. Hello, welcome. I just started, so. Besides, this is the boring part, so. So, dramatic change in the world of computing, right? Today, uh, the demand of the distributed system has exploded, right? Our customer had high expectation for the application. They wanted uh, immediate response, no failure, and, uh, with that, also the requirement to write application or change, right? So if you search online for the hottest uh, technology right now, you found you know, cloud computing, reactive application, and so on, and possible you know, with the big data award in the hand, everybody like that. So with this trend, really, we need a tool that allows developers like us to uh, bend this technology in the, the, the request, the requirement to our will, right? And Overall, we still want to build application with uh, um, this kind of a, of a uh, requirement. You know, it is maintainable, testable, reusable, and so on. So it's not easy, right? So how do we achieve this? So this is a couple of quotes of published book, but what they really mean is that um, the landscape of distributed cloud computer really represents a dramatic um, uh, change for the modern programmer, right? And uh, on top of that, we're talking about the with the computing, but we're still, you know, arguing about how to solve the concurrency issue. So we still have like a, the single machine, multi-core problem to solve, but 
we are already uh, facing other challenges with the distributed system. And with all these questions and issues, there's also the um, race or answer solutions, you know, such as the Racti Manifesto. How many of you are familiar with the Racti Manifesto? All right. So really, the Racti Manifesto set what uh, your application need to meet the, this model, right? So really, uh, briefly, responsive, it means that the system must be uh, work on the same way, no matter if under stress or, or what kind of load has the, the, the system in the back. Message-driven architecture, you know, is loosely coupled, asynchronous, no blocking, which is really the secret to build a high scalable application. Resilient is mean that the system is able to react on failure, isolate exception, and react accordingly and bring back the system in shape as it was in the beginning, right? And we talk about all this in detail later. And elastically, this is the key for the distributed system. It means that the system is able to uh, contract or expand on demand according to, 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 to the request, right, to the, to the load demand. It's able to add or remove nodes, so it's not just scaling up or, or scaling out, but also be able to scaling down, right, recite himself. So this is the classic slide that, you know, everybody saw in the last five years. I, I like this one with the color combination, it'll be easier to read, but what really need, what really means is that um, today we're facing this concurrency programming model, right? Everybody had devices with multiple cores today. And there is the evolution, right, that uh, uh, hardware multiple core and bring us this new challenge. So in the 65 more predict that uh, the density and the speed of the chip was doubling every 18 months, but this is not possible anymore, right? So pro programs, a programmer cannot anymore leverage one single CPU that go faster and faster, right? But instead, we're programming to need to run in parallel and benefit and leverage all the resources of the machine. So the free lunch is over, they said, and uh, these days and more in the future, a computer will ship multiple cores, and which is great because it enables the computer to process several tasks at the same time. And, but the problem is that the majority of mainstream languages out there weren't designed with concurrency in mind, right? So it's not easy. So today you run no application, you found you know, that your CPU, hello, welcome. That you run your application, you see that your, your resources actually are not um, usable, right? There's only one CPU that do all the work and the other just idle there. So what you're gonna do is say, oh, no problem, you know, I'm gonna span several threads, you know, my, run my whole application and run a multi-thread application, right? Well, this is theory, it's pretty easy there, right, in the paper, but in practice, it's a bit more complicated than that, right? So what's the problem? The problem is the share of state, right? So I think that everybody knows that write concurrent application is hard, or Actually, I take it back. Right, correct concurrent application is hard, right? There might be, you know, deadlock, race condition, and so on. And so what's the solution with that? Well, you know, in, the, in a traditional way, you start to use primitives such as, you know, lock, semaphore, mutex, and so on. And um, there are several problems with that. First of all, there is not really the bugger or tool that can tell you to put the lock in the right place, right? You run your machine, you ship in production, and then a few months later you have that lock in the server. How you can produce that bug? Pretty hard, right? Almost impossible. And uh, really the lock, it doesn't, it prevent to run in parallel. It just um, allowed you to run the system without crashing when the, 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 the share is corrupted. So it really actually, the ground the performance, right? And besides, maybe you need the piece of code to be uh, locked maybe one time every 10,000 calls. But because you put in that lock, well, you call the lock every single time. So the performance are done grounded, right? You like the slides with the thread, try to catch each other? So, okay, this is a great, but you know, we are in Lambda Conf here, so good news for functional programmer, we know all this is, is not a problem for us, right? We know that uh, functional programming has out-of-the-box solution for this because support for immutability, right? 
And so function programming, uh, it doesn't run in parallel right out of the box, but to change to be run in parallel, it doesn't require big change in your code base. It run, it's ready to, to run in parallel, right? Thanks to immutability. So this is great news for, for functional programmer. But at the same time, we have another problem. So who knows uh, Amanda's law here? All right, so these guys here wake up one day and decide that no matter how many resources to use to your program, but you're gonna reach one limit. And the limit is that the constraint to the portion of your code that it can only run sequential, right? So this, the, for instance, here in the slide said that if your code can be parallelized 95%, no matter what you're gonna do, you're gonna reach the limit that your code can run 25, 20 times faster. That's it, right? Well, it seems we can not win, but it turns out that uh, with the actor-based programming model, you can deal pretty well with this program. And, and, and how? Well, because the actor model uses this um, interconnection between you know, processes and, and computer that can cooperate um, to the solution, right? So we can distribute the work, right? So it's some sort of unbounded scalability. So I, we discussed a little bit about immutability, and definitely immutability uh, is a is a great and important tool for building uh, concurrent software, a predictable software. But another very important characteristic is a natural isolation, right? So this is really the two uh, ingredients for the secret sauce to, to build your best concurrent uh, programming model. And uh, it turns out that the actor model actually um, support both out of the box, right? We have immutability because uh, actor communicate uh, by messages that are passed by value, so they're immutable. And because they communicate by messages, they share nothing approach, right? They'll, they cannot access the state of the actor. They can only send messages to communicate each other. So this is a, a simple code that you, majority of you are familiar. There's a, a F sharp, how you can, can you see the code there, everybody? Okay. Well, um, this is a, how you, um, create an, an, uh, an agent in F-sharp, right? So what it really does here is a, a synchronous function, um, and um, you just asynchronous, uh, receive a message, and then just uh, use a pattern match, you know, to um, um, deconstruct your message, you compute the message. But the more interesting part here, oops, sorry, is this part here, right? Uh, this is a collection that actually is immutable. Right, immutable, so it's not trade safe, but because it's inside the agent, it's isolated, so it's trade safe. So it's about isolation too. All right, let's bring us to talk about the actor. So actor really is an independent computational unit um, that contain a message queue, you can see in the slide, and uh, react when they receive a message, right? So. The, 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 the actor is composed of three main components, the mailbox, the behavior, and the state. As I mentioned, so the actor can no access um, other actor state, right? Because only uh, send messages. And uh, per nature, uh, actors are single-threaded, which is great because it provides out of the box a very uh, simplified you know, programming model, right? So the actor receives the message, which is asynchronous for out the world, so it's no blocking. Receive the message and react to the message to compute the message. Now, while you compute the message, all the other income messages, they're not lost, they're buffered, right? This is uh, dependent the, 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 the framework, but uh, it's an unbounded queue. So just receive the message and ready to be computed. So but think about an actor as a rental car. You want a car, you, you call a rental company, they deliver a car, right? You drive around, and the car breaks. You don't care to fix the car, right? You call the rental company. They send you, ship you a new car. So, any questions so far? And the actor mode is no, not at all uh, new, right? It's been around for a while. So the actor really is a, 
is a mathematical model for a concurrent computation that was originated in the 73, so is over 40 years old, um, by this man, Carl Hewitt. And uh, so really, actor, what I really li like about the actor is really raise the, the level of abstraction and provide this um, simplified programming model to write a log-free application, right? And the actor have three axioms. So actor can send messages to other actors. Actor can create other actors. And also actor can um, determine how to respond uh, uh, to the next message, meaning they can change internal behavior, right? We see actually in the code sample, uh, they can change, according to the message, they can change state, but also they can change behavior. So actor really can make a local decision. Um, now, he said that um, because actor can send messages to other actor, actor, one actor is no actor, actor will come in system. Yeah, it's true, but in real world, I found myself to use actor just to write um, a very fine state machine, just because you can change behavior inside that. So actually, I found myself very useful uh, um, just for you know, the daily programming model. And the actor actually had a great reputation, right? That's why actually it's getting more and more interest today. And uh, you know, they're all the Cinderella story like what's up using this technology. But the, 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 the first major abduction uh, success was by Ericsson using Erlang in the 80s, right? It was able to uh, use, uh, embrace completely the actor model and uh, for the telephone industry and, and build this switch that was able to run um, 99 as per year, which means 30 milliseconds down per year, right? So pretty crazy how you think we're able to measure that. You have to should make a research about that, pretty interesting. But how do you achieve that? Well, we'll discuss later, but really the actor model, also they embrace this let it crash concept, really. And uh, we have more details about that coming. So really the actor model is no new, but it solves all this great problem. And, great benefit. But ultimately, more important, the actor model, as I um, said in the introduction, is full compliant to the actor manifesto, right? Is event-driven per nature, use a, a, a synchronous message passive pass semantic to interact with, with each other, right? So uh, they can send messages to each other in, in a synchronous manner, so it's not blocking and, 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 and scalable. And, um, and we see later also for the, 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 elastic, the elasticity when we talk about remoting, how it is, it is to um, scaling up and scaling out your system. So very elastic. So F Sharp has built in this agent, right? Uh, which has pretty much the same characteristic of an actor. So I have the mailbox, you know, the behavior, the state and they have full support for the async workflow, so out of the box, great support for, for um, um, distributed system. But there is a problem with this. So again, this is a, how you create your agent. So there is a problem with the piece of code. There's not a bug, right? And the problem is here. And the problem is because it's not a bug, but you, you can uh, access an agent uh, not by an address, but by, by an explicit uh, reference, by an explicit instance, right? So what does it mean? It means that uh, an agent is not out of the process. It's, a, it's in memory, right? It's only in process. But there are some benefits with an agent, right? Think about an agent as a memory slot. You can put in a slot any kind of primitive type, array, integer, whenever. But because it's in memory, you can even send a function. Right? You can send behavior. You can compose function together and send it to the agent. And then agent can get this function and, and apply atomically to all the behavior, right? So actually agent, um, theoretically, is more functional than an actor, right? Because allowed to write more functional manner, uh, um, concurrent application versus an actor. But again, agent as in process, there are no all these um, 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 you know, durable mailbox or supervision functionality built in, there are helper library for that. But again, agent is not an actor, right? Any question about this part? All right, 
and try to speed up to call the code sample that are cool stuff. So that brings us to the ACA.NET, right? Which is the port of the JVM ACA to the .NET platform. And this is actually the definition of the ACA from the JVM. And what really it is, is uh, they define a toolkit. And uh, it's a toolkit really to use <coughs> to achieve better performance uh, with a very simple, a simpli simplified programming model, right? And actor are cheap. So compared to Thread, you can fit 2.7 million actor in one gig, right? And that's actually, if it's a crazy number, allowed you to really uh, give you a lot of freedom how you can model and, and, and express your domain with actors, right? So how do we achieve this? Well, actors are reactive. So when the actor have no message to process, is idle, which means the resource of the thread is sent back to the scheduler, right? And when they receive the message, then the scheduler sends back the, the, the thread and process the message. So how do you keep your actor system from falling apart, right? When Things go wrong because, you know, things go wrong, right? Well, the answer is supervision. And it's called parental supervision, meaning that, as I mentioned earlier, actor create other actor. So when the actor that create the actor is responsible for the supervision of the child. So, and how the supervision can help her to resolve the error, right? Well, can apply strategies, right? So when there is an exception or there's a problem, so the child send notification to the supervisor and the supervisor apply the strategy, which is pretty great because the notification and all the information such as the type of the exception, uh, why uh, the, the, the error was thrown, the failure. And according with that, the supervisor can, can, can apply the, the specific uh, um, strategy. And we have an example about this. But more important, like when I, as I mentioned with, with Erlang approach, this is great, this is healthy. Right? So stop to be paranoid to program such in a defensive way to um, you know, put try catch everywhere and, and you know, be worried that your application go down because anyways, they're gonna go down sooner or later, right? You know that. So at this point, the best solution, don't get worried. Sit back and just you know, make the system taking care of that. You know? Apply your strategy and when there's an exception, they're gonna take care for you. That's pretty cool, right? I mean, nine niners. So it's a good result, so it must work, right? So uh, super briefly about the strategy here. There are several, but the two more use is one for one supervision, which means if one node go down, the supervisor uh, catch uh, the, 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 the failure and apply the strategy for the single node and bring back the system. Otherwise, um, one for all, if one node go down, well, apply the strategy for all the sibling, for all the node that belong, for all the child that belong to that node, right? And bring back the system. Well, remoting, this is a very, uh, so I can really design for distributed system. And uh, as I mentioned really, um, when you send a message between actor, you really you know, need to know where you send the message, right? The system is gonna take care of you. It's really transparent for you. And this is awesome because you send a message to an actor, it can be anywhere, and use exactly the same API. It can be same process, same machine, out the network, anywhere. So really, the, 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 the fact they provide unified programming model is, is great. And this concept we call location transparency, which, as I mentioned, means that uh, Whenever you send a message to an actor, you don't bother to know where it is where it is located, right? So this is the secret for scaling up and also scaling out, right? Think about, uh, for instance, if uh, my wife is looking for me and she didn't need to know that where I am now here, Boulder or shopping or you know Redmond, Seattle, she just get the cell phone. She need to know my cell phone number, right? She called me, and then uh, that's it. It's so simple. That's pretty much how work location transparency. But now, this is the slide that work worth all the presentation, okay? So pay attention here. This is why I'm sure, especially in the code sample in the hand, and I call the grand finale, 
uh, I would like you to go home on your time, download the code sample and play with. This is pretty awesome. So, um, ACA.NET and F Sharp really has this powerful combination between, between these two technology. F Sharp had this feature built in called code quotation. So when you wrap a piece of code between you know, the um, arrow at, the compiler creates for you an abstract syntax tree that represents your code. Okay? And the API in ACA.NET is able to serialize this code send it out, and deploy your actor. Okay, I didn't see any impressive face, but I have some nice code sample. So, again, in a remote machine with no actor, nothing, I'm able to, in a code sample later, remote deploy any kind of actor I want to and send messages. Be pretty cool. This is very powerful concept. It simulates very close what Erlang can do, right? So routing, uh, router used to spawn multiple instances of an actor and to distribute it and load balance the work between them, right? And each actor is independent, as I mentioned, on mailbox and so on. There are different kinds of strategies. Uh, for instance, you can create a, a group actor, so you create manually your actor and group together and send a message to the router that is responsible to send the message to the routee, or better, um, you just tell the system how many actors you want. Now, I figure out that this actually, um, it doesn't really cover the power because there are different strategy, uh, they call elastic mailbox and so on. Actually, in a config here, you can set a threshold. You can set, I want a minimum two to maximum 30 actors. And accordingly to thresholds such as and the mailbox can all, uh, have more than, I don't know, 50 messages, right? React accordingly. So if the, the, the queue reach more than 50 messages, spawn a new actor for me and distribute the work, right? So this is all built in an API. And by the way, documentation for ACA.NET rock solid, which, sure. Super briefly, because I want to jump in a code sample, uh, broadcast, I think everybody knows what it is. Uh, I really want to jump in a code sample here. Uh, round, round, uh, round robin, you know, just to evenly distribute the work between actors. And round robin here, group, is just a combination between broadcast and, and, and round robin. Now, the last slide before we go to the code sample that anyways are going to still find minus because we start late, right? Is a type and untype actor. That's something that even the ACA um, from the GVM don't have them working on it, right? So, Generally speaking, the actor are untyped. And then when you send a message, you check what type of message it is and react accordingly. Type actor really, uh, as you can imagine, is a statically typed version of, of the, 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 the actor. And there are some pro and cons, right? As I mentioned here. So really, uh, this type Actor is great when you want to combine an existing imperative uh, in a system building with an imperative language. So from them side, for, and from their high, you just call a function, right? You just call a method. That's it. But uh, I recommend to use an type actor behind that because especially with the F# -sharp API, you can hot swap, change behavior, right? But you cannot change signature. So. Yeah, this is how you create an untype actor by going to jump in a code sample, right? So let's go to the code samples better. All right, so I have several examples here. Uh, so I'm going to be incremental, and it's going to start simple to uh, until the grand finale, as I call it. So how you start? Well, uh, first of all, you create your system. Right? You give it the name. And the system is the root to use to create all your actor, right? You define your actor, in this case in untype. This is on receive message. And the message here, because type in fair is ref sharp, you know it's an object type. You can be explicit, say it's an object, but it's smart enough to recognize that. I use pattern matching to figure out what kind of message it is. If it's a string, I use the test in fixed operator in F sharp. 
I'm gonna send out a hello, otherwise it's anything else with the underscore, you know, just group anything else. I'm gonna just print out what should I do. Uh, I create my actor and then I send the messages with the tell. There's a tell and ask, and we're gonna see later <coughs> what, it, what it does. So let me select all this code here. Send to the repo, oh, where is my repo? Which is, by the way, is a great tool, right, the repo. Just send the code there and run right away. So right now in a repo, I just uh, define my actor. Now I create my actor. So you can see here, uh, the actor created already provide me the, the address, which is uh, uh, the address of the actor that can use for location transparency. It say dollar $B, right? But it because I need to specify the name, right? If I specify a name, which is recommended, it tell me no. Uh, there with it is. So it's easy for me to, refer to reference the actor. So I send a message now, which is a string. So I'm expecting hello, lambda cough, because a string, if I send an integer, because I don't know what to do, it print this message. Okay, this is pretty straightforward, okay? Cool. This is a type actor. Uh, stop if you have any question. So this is a... Did you say untyped? Yeah, this was untyped because the message is object type. This is a, a type actor, so I create two type messages, increment and decrement, discriminator union, right? So the message can be increment, I do some incremented print or decrement. So then I have a mutable state, but because it's isolated, it's thread safe. And here I create a function for each message that I want to handle, right? So in this case, I receive that handle the increment message or receive for the decrement message. When I send the message, the actor handle uh, and, and call the function accordingly of the message type that I send, right? So in this case, simply I uh, increment the state and print the state or decrement the state variable in line 21 and display the state. Pretty simple, right? Now, interesting, the type actor and also this method that you can override, which is called hand handle, it does exactly what an untype actor does, right? So if you send a message that you didn't specify it when you define your actor, it doesn't throw an exception, it just got lost. But you have the option to override this, this, this method and actually do something, it can be some logging, deadlock, or whatever. All right, I'm gonna select this code here, send to my repo. I create my system and Okay, now I create my simple actor. So if I send the print, you can see zero, right? Now I send increment, I say three times, one, two, three, and I tell print again, of course the state is print, right? Now I send the other uh, message display, or decrement in this case, which is the other message type. So that is the second receive function call. One, two, and display is one. The state is one. Now the uh, left arrow bank is a part of the F sharp API. This is the same as tell. Now we have left arrow question mark for ask. Ask is when you send a message and then you receive in a, a task, a, a synchronous future, waiting for the result, right? And of course, I'm from Italy, I send ciao, which is no message that was defined, so it got to my unhandled message and print, I don't know what to do with this stuff. All right, that was cool, almost. Now, a better implementation is be functional, right? So let's start to have a little uh, feeling of what is the F-sharp API. So this I'll create an actor using the F-sharp API. So I create my message type function, um, uh, message type here, by the way, everybody familiar with discriminator union, the, the syntax F sharp a little bit? But it isn't, okay. If you have any question, no, please stop. The system you can see is a bit different. Now it's system.create lowercase. If you check, here is actor system.create. This is a traditional way. The F sharp API use this way to create your system because under the needed 
is handle the serialization for the code quotation, for remote deployment, add a few things about the F-sharp API. To define your actor, use, the, of course, a function. The span function take a, a system, the name of the actor, and a function, that a pieback, uh, that is uh, uh, the function of your mailbox, right? So the actor here is a computation expression, and what it does is just synthetic sugar that is spat for you in a synchronous recursive function. So you send a message, compute the message, and then, you know, recursively, uh, wait again for the next income message. And of course, you're able to keep some state, which is very handy. So, yeah. So uh, if I was using just a straight-up mailbox processor in Egypt, I'd, that'd be an async block, right? Uh, which one? For the actor computation expression. This one? Yeah. Yes. That, that'd be an async. How is the actor different? Uh, so. That's actually, I didn't want to cover the topic because it take a while, but, so, the actor is asynchronous for out the world, right? You send a message and you keep going, that's okay. Actor are single threaded, but you can compute asynchronously inside the actor too, right? Now, um, I have a code sample that it takes some time to cover, um, but inside here, you see they use the bank F sharp, you know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Now the message is a message. If I remove the bank here, the message becomes um, IO actually in this case because it's a, inside the actor computation expression. It's asynchronous. So let's say that you want it inside the actor send out an asynchronous call to a, a service or a file system, right? Well, you have to be careful. There is an API, it's called pipe2, right? Because if you call asynchronously uh, and you have to be careful, Maybe the actor, because um, send out a synchronous the computation, you keep going, exit the loop, and get the next message from the loop, right? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe there are some dependency from the state. You don't know, you can break something. So it's your foot. There are some API to, to, to program defensively. And uh, um, I have the code sample here, so you can download it and play with it. It's called really ask. And actually, this three file here, Synchronize ask, ask, and ask async actually walk you through to what to do and what not to do. Actually, um, you can see here um, briefly, I have this pipe, which is pipe two in fixed operator in F sharp. And actually, in the code sample, uh, in other file, this is actually, I, you can walk you through, and actually, I think, I can tell you actually this is bad practice, right? So I don't want to cover this because I don't have much time, but it's a code sample, go down, and you can play with this stuff, and it's all there. But yeah, good question, good question. So uh, I'm going by time. All right, so let's go back briefly here to better implementation. So this is how you create your actor in, in F Sharp. So I'm not going to run it because pretty much do what the other actor does. It. So uh, but this is how you create an actor in F sharp, more functional approach. Um, you and the state machine, as I mentioned, the actor has uh, the option to have different state machine, right? So in this case, I create my heating actor. They have my heat state machine, cool state machine and normal state machine, right? So, and accordingly with the message, right? Like the, the actor start, start in a normal state. But if I send a message to heat up, it's gonna change the state to heat, right? So it's pretty simple how, simple how to change state. Let's uh, actually start to run something more interesting, right? So I wanna start with a chat then I know time to cover the supervision, but I'm gonna jump to the grand finale directly because we start late and uh, damn it. So let's start with the chat, okay? So three project. So this is just you know the message library. I just use the uh, types here to open my message. I use discriminator union. It just to have provide a different approach, different idea. So to connect request. 
uh, send a message. So uh, very simple messages, right? The server here is just an actor. I define some configuration with I, I enable my remoting with my uh, TCP and listening in port 8080 in the local host. And then the chat server start to uh, listen and keep state of the client that register here, right? So start to loop and I might asynchronously wait for, for, for the message income. So in this case, for instance, the first function, connect a request, I create a response, a welcome to send back to the client. I can access the sender. So when I send a message, the actor receives the message, can access the, ref the, the address, not the ref, the address, or who send the message is sent back, right? And send back the welcome. And then, of course, I keep the state and add the, 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 the sender to my current state. So if I send a message to everybody, I just, you know, loop and send a message to everybody when I send a, a, a message. Pretty, pretty, a chat system, right? Uh, the client here, the same functionality that a client could have. I make some configuration. Initially here, I set my nickname. I reference, I use the address of the server here, right? So when I send a message, I send a message to the server. So for instance, when I have my connect request, I send my nickname to the server, right? In the server register. And send a message, I send a message to the server dispatch and so on. Here in the hand, I, I send my nickname to the server, mean to the current actor sent to the server and look for messages. So pretty straightforward implementation, but let's see how does it work, right? Uh, I create just a simple script to call the executable file. So let's start the server is up and running, okay? I start three client because you want somebody to talk, otherwise something is said, right? So register Ricky, you're connecting, and the server receive the Ricky here, right? Different, all different processes. Uh, Bryony, she's connecting. All right, so Brian say, hello. Now Ricky received a message. Ricky say, ciao, because I'm from Italy, okay, ciao. Pretty straightforward, but very simple, powerful, how you start to communicate between processes, right? You just get the, the address, send the messages, everything taken care of for you. All right. Uh, I'm not gonna check the supervision because time, but uh, let's start with the last two example about remote deployment. So, all right, so this is the, one of the very powerful concepts that you have in uh, F Sharp and, and ACA.NET, right? As I mentioned, we use code quotation to serialize the code and remote deploy. So here I have two helper functions, so don't worry about how they're implemented, they just, they deploy remotely, accept a string as argument, and just return a deploy type with a remote scope. The spawn remote accept a system as argument, the remote uh, address, which is a string, the actor name, exp, is uh, the code quotation, right? So I use this function, pass the code quotation, and, and remote deploy my actor. I create my system, and here is the magic, right? <coughs> so I use my helper function, and I remote deploy. This is a simple actor. The grand finale is something more sophisticated, of course, but. So to prove this is gonna work, everybody give me a, a number. 42. 42. Any color beside pink, because apparently it's not pink. Fuchsia. All right. Oh. It's not fuchsia. Uh, magenta, magenta is good. All right, so this is a, so far I work in my favorite VM tool in Windows, which is Visual Studio. Uh, this is, and I was in my VM in, in the Mac, right? This is Xamarin. So this is a, uh, I'm gonna run a system in Xamarin, so different machine, right? Two different VMs, okay? The Xamarin is just the library to run ACA. There is no reference to any kind of actor implementation. 
So I run this, you can see it's a configuration, the host, the port, and there is no any um, printing, anything. So let's run it. Okay, it's small, so let's make it bigger. Okay, cool. Now let's go here to my Visual Studio, which is my Windows operation system. I send everything, okay, until here. So here nothing happened, okay? So let's remote deploy the actor. Okay, something arrived there. There is some handshaking. Say, okay, I received this actor. I'm happy, I trust you. I have no time to talk about security, but it's okay. I trust you. What are you gonna do with this stuff? Well, how about I send you some messages, right? I say, hello, LambdaConf, Echo Remote, and what's your name? Christopher. All right, I'll just put Chris, okay? And send messages. So the messages, they're not printing the current console because they're here, right? Pretty cool. Now, let's go to the grand finale, right? Now, this is something that you're gonna love it. The grand finale is worth this presentation. So, the fractal. So, what is the fractal? So, this is a very bad implementation, C sharp, or the Mandelbrot algorithm. I'm not gonna spend time here, but just to have, you know, different kind of implementation. The remote here, it does exactly what we just saw. It does some configuration and there is what? Nothing. There is no implementation in actor in reference, no library, okay? Now, the actor here, the remote, the, 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 the fract actor has some ugly code for some window form. So what's going on here? I'm gonna spawn a remote system with no implementation in the actor, okay? I'm gonna create a WinForm application with a picture box empty. I'm gonna break in tile, send the empty tile to my remote deploy actor. We're gonna make some magic, massage the tile, send them back in my WinForm and display my Melbro there. So pretty cool, right? So here's some configuration. I mean, I tried to explain this stuff to my wife. She's not that excited, so I hope you understand. This is pretty cool. So here there's some configuration, some picture box in WinForm. So this is not um, nothing fancy. Uh, upper function, I receive from my remote actor deploy, I receive a, a byte array, right? So I convert it to an image. And here the render, I get the image, I mean the, the, the bytes, the coordinated, use the helper function and stack it to my picture box, okay? Display tile is a, a local actor that receive messages from my remote actor that I remote deploy. And I use a dispatcher, the synchronized dispatcher to avoid, you know, Marshall trading exception. Here, I'm gonna remote deploy my actor using round robin, uh, uh, round robin um, routing. This is my implementation of my actor. So it's start to be more sophisticated, right? I get some memory strings, save the image, everything. I reference my Melbrot in C sharp, wrapping up everything, and remote deploy, all right? Now here, the last part, I'm gonna break apart my picture and start to send to the remote actor I just deployed the information my coordinated and also the address on my local actor, so in massage the empty tile and send back the image, okay? Let's run it. Are you excited? Mm -hmm. All right, this is the remote actor, that's the remote system, there is no actor here, there is nothing here, right? There's some, um, I put everything logging, but now let's start it, so. All right, so the WinForm is up and running, so I click start. I remote deploy the actor. This is the log of the remote actor. Actually, the remote system was no actor, right? So now I send, I receive back the tile with my bell here. That's pretty cool, right? All right? All right, so and it's cool? Yeah. All right. 
That's, that's awesome. Now, I have something a little bit better. How about, right? So, and again, I put a number there. It can be dynamically expanded for you, right? You can set that for you. But what's happened now? I'm expecting increased performance, right? And especially when you have this motivation, you can tell your wife, that's why I get couple of berry pies so I can dispatch the work. You know, you have some good material to explain why, right? All right, so let's remote deploy this boy. Remotely now, you're gonna create 16 instances of the actor. That's pretty cool, right? Now the black tile arrived earlier, of course, because there is not much work. And here, I'm gonna be And of course, you're gonna go to check the performance. is all 100%. Pretty cool, right? Question? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, this was my grand finale. Uh, yeah, 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 I know. Well, we start late, you know, so. I, I feel, this is my information. Uh, Twitter account, GitHub presentation, Acre, Acre mode is all there. And if any question, unfortunately they cut me off, but that's all, and uh, I'm around, so. Okay.